Hello. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Miniature Mondays. I'm Josh from Mini Painting Studio, here to paint more miniatures with you. So, uh, I guess real quick, shout out to D Clear Man, right? Subbing again for nine months. Remember, you can sub here on Twitch with Amazon Prime for free. If you haven't done that before, all you got to do is click the little subscribe button that's on the, I guess you're over here, this part of your screen, top right, and you'll be able to uh, link it to your Amazon account and get that information. So, of course, today we are painting uh, the big boss monster from our first encounter. So if you want to go to close cam for me. Yep. We are going to be painting... Da, 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 the Ice Troll, of course, here we just have him primed and ready for all the work that we're doing. Uh, but here is our end goal that we hopefully can do today. I'm only slightly freaking out because I can't remember which blue I layered second. So you know what? We'll just make it happen. But, of course, if you, this is your first time joining, you don't know exactly what we're talking about. We've been working on four miniatures this month. So first miniature that we painted, of course, was this puppy right here. Painting him up in the nice ice scheme, since these two uh, are friends, I suppose, in the encounter, showing up together. But so we painted this guy first. Second, we always have some, some type of support character or NPC. And so here we have Oswald the Overladen. This is the guy that uh, we ended up painting last week. And then our final miniature for this encounter for January is our hero here. This guy is a metal miniature. Um, I'll have a video on preparing this metal miniature for you uh, before we get started next week. Um, and it should be relatively quick, so we'll probably play that in at the beginning. Justin will load that in for you, and you'll be able to see that. Any metal miniatures that we have or anything weird that I need to do for prep, I'll now film for you at home, and then you'll be able to see anything special that I did to help you also assemble your stuff if you're not as familiar with metal or whatever the case may be. And, of course, I know a lot of you have been excited to find out what we're going to be working on, so we are announcing uh, next month's encounter. So this month, our hero was trapped in some type of ice storm or blizzard as he was navigating his little little pack animal friend here. It's funny, he's all, Oswald here is almost as tall as the dwarf because he's so overladen, how appropriately named. But you can see that we have these here, uh, you know, in our snowstorm as they were ambushed and attacked by a puppy and a gigantic ice troll. So now then every month you got to you got to do a little movie D&D magic with me here or and or whatever role playing system you want. But obviously our hero and support characters change. So our hero for next month is we actually have the names. I don't have the names right now, but I know we do have the skews. Um, but so we have this wizard right here. You can see we have some nice warm brown red tones and this nice sort of off-muted green, so not really an olive green. Um, this is nice because green and red, of course, are friendly colors with each other, but if you uh, sort of overdo it, they always look like Christmas. So that's why I sort of uh, avoid that. Then, our support character is this good old monk right here. So you can see him hanging out. Lots of variants in brown tone. Probably reading all the same today, just because we had to uh, adjust the camera to deal with a bunch of blue. But we have him. He'll be escorting uh, you know, our, our wizard man, this little friar, as they make their way into a cave. So you can kind of see too, I actually sculpted green stuff and rocks on these bases, so it's sort of like they're moving into a cave, um, but not, you can see this here, like the, the bigger boulders are sculpted there on the base. Um, then the first creature, which is summoned by the big boss, is this ice go golem or crystal golem here. So this one is probably my favorite from the entire set mostly because we mixed uh, the actual see-through plastic. So I don't know how well you can see. Yeah, you can see it here. So his back and his arms and his chest are still totally see-through and transparent. And then we move on um, to the face, the legs, and the hands to being painted. So this won't be too insanely difficult. This, this one is a very technical paint job, but uh, it turned out looking amazing and then uh, I didn't ruin it, so that was kind of my biggest worry. <laughs> but so again, the base thing, we've got rocks and some snow, but this guy's really, really cool. And then uh, he is summoned by our big boss monster for February, which is this Yeti right here. Now this poor Yeti is blown out completely. Let me shield him a little bit from the light. So you can see he has like really pink and fleshy skin, um, but at least the uh, fur is sort of showing up. We've got like red tones in the shadows in the fur, everything like that. And then you can see the weapons 
um, and then the little dangles on his uh, necklace are sort of the same color and crystal as his golem. So encounter wise, you know, that's kind of the idea is that he summons a golem and it attacks our heroes. So um, that are, those are, I should say, uh, the miniatures for the next set. Now then, uh, I know Justin has some good news as the first set is right now available for purchase. And then once these get photographed, probably within the next day or so, that set will go up for you for February as well. But Justin, do you have more info on that? Yes, I do. Actually, I'm going to cut back to you while we talk. Sweet. Because uh, you get a pretty face. Just saying. Anyway. So, oh, yeah, and Red Bull. I want to look at the Red Bull. There's, there's no logo. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Monster, en Monster Energy TM. Um, so, anyway, we actually have the first kit available. It's supposed to be now, but I can't find it on the website because I guess it hasn't refreshed. Um, but the SKU is, uh, let's see, 95001. Um, but that is going to be, uh, it's going to have a pistol case. It's going to have, uh, the miniature Monday, like graphic on the outside. It's going to have the paints for this kit, not the core palette. That'll be separate. And then it'll have the minis that we're doing. Yep. So it will be, um, available. Ron told me it was up. It's not quite coming up yet. So I will ask him about that, but it is, it's supposed to be there. So, um, to answer your question, Turbo, yes. So every single... Uh, thank you, Sydney, for the compliment. So every single month, um, we have eight colors that will change. So that's why in our first month here for January, everything has that sort of blue hue to it. And then as we move on to February, using that palette, there's a lot more browns and warmer tones and less just direct blue. So, um, And then there are six base colors that are sort of like what we're assuming we're going to use every single time, no matter what. And that's just black, white, brown, metallics, and... I think that's it. Something else, but whatever. Six six paints to actually make that up. So, um, but anyway, yeah. Ron did walk in right before we got started, and he's he said that they were uh, put together. And they're being loaded onto the site. However, that works, um, and then that that's just how that's going to go. So, and then I did get the package for March's stuff today. So uh, I'll I'll be make sure to knock those out as soon as I can. Probably it'll be like it was this weekend where I'm doing it immediately before it's due, but. That's just the name of the game, so, you know. And I can tell you guys the price point on these two, because I'm sure that's what you're curious of, is thirty nine ninety nine, I believe. Thirty nine ninety nine. Well, that's already a good deal, so there you go. Yeah, so. But, that's good, but that you'll hit your $40 uh, mark every single month if that's something that uh, you're interested in doing. And then remember as well, didn't they change, didn't they, um, they're adding new 12 minis, or is it once every month? I remembered someone saying it on one of the streams this week, or last week. Oh, I think it's a, it is a different mini, I believe, but it's like one of 12 are available, yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Because I know what you can get right now, it's uh, older miniatures and then some interesting ones too, that right. you wouldn't norm like an Arachno Assassin Correct. and uh, you know, things like that. So, um, But that'll get you, uh, you know, where uh, you need to be to get your free mini for the month. Oh, Sparex. Uh, okay, the TLDR Sparex is, the first kit is purchasable, I don't want to say purchasable now because you can't just go get it because it has to be refreshed or something. It is in the system. The system's just not displaying it. So I have to figure out why it's not doing that first. Um, but just so that we're clear, because I know people are going to ask, the core colors do come separate. So when you're looking at the flyer that you see core palette, he's using that core palette over the course of the next three months. Yeah. Um, but the promotional colors at the top of that is the, the main colors that he, they're going to change each month for each kit. And those are the only ones that come in the kit. So it's eight paints, four minis. And then the, the pistol case and the foam and stuff. So. Yeah. So, I mean, you get the case. You also get um, the uh, Nojan. There's no SKU for February, as far as we know, right now. Oh, it would... it would. So, actually, it's 95002. Oh, okay. Then and there then you go. 003 for the third kit. Wow, um, there you go. Uh, and I believe... I Now, let me see here. I have to get it together, but the... I literally got to get it Thank together. Thank you, Achilles. That's really sweet. I appreciate it. Oh, look at that. Thank you, Achilles. Um, and the core set skew, when that goes up today, will be 95000. So, and that is the core palette. That's six paints? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. And the core palette, too, we're still deciding if that's going to change with uh, sort of like every season. So we're just noting this as rotations of three months at a time, right? So quarter one, two, three, four. If we do change out that middle set, it will be probably quarter two. So halfway through the year. Um, and if it does change, it'll be like a slightly different black and a slightly different white and then just two different metallics. So that's something I don't think we necessarily need to change. We may, if there's like new colors coming out, that would be cool to try, right? If that makes sense. Right. So, 
because um, those really are like everybody's got a black, everybody's got some kind of white, right? Um, metallics, whatever. So this that's more of just if you want to be the kind of person that has exactly what I'm using, then you'll have exactly what I'm using. Otherwise, some people have huge collections. You can just use what you have to match it. So correct. Um, and yeah. Trexmar, since we actually just got this together, I th I imagine we'll be putting some together to send on the pallet to Kit, but that will be two weeks before he gets them. So. You, you may not have them available right away, I guess, unless you want to order one here. We also don't know how much in demand they're going to be. So we made, I think we have 24 available when it does show up on the website, yeah. when that does happen. Um, so make sure it sells out quickly. Yeah, if it sells out quickly. That'll then, help me out a lot, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> then we will know that we have to make some more. Um, yeah. And it'll give us better numbers for, for number two. So if you want one of these, I would suggest... Please purchasing it sooner than later so that we kind of have a metric to move off of for the next two months. Right. So, and then that way too, like we know, obviously, I got plenty of messages too. Uh, and remember, if you're trying to send somehow messages to my personal Facebook account, it's never going to work. So, either make a post in the Reaper group or just message my page directly. But I know a lot of people were like, you know, uh, I, I've already bought stuff for this month. So, these kits, some of you may have already bought the stuff for just because you thought they weren't going to be available. Obviously, moving forward, everything's going to be available in enough time for you to get it. Um, I know uh, Byron, who has been painting and showing his miniatures he's been working on, um, I believe he's in Australia. So he was like, hey, I put my, I need at least two weeks, right? Like 10 full days of shipping time. So we are trying to get it out to you fast enough to where you can do that. And then like today, right, the new painted minis are here. They make the little shot and then boom, it's on the website. You can see it and it looks great. So I think that's pretty much it. There it is. All right. Well, I mean, I guess we can uh, try and paint an ice troll. So this is gonna be fun. All right. I can't wait to see this. All right. So we can go ahead and get to work. I know somebody said I want to see that pokey tool. So uh, here's the normal side of the pokey tool, and then Whoa. here's the exclusive side of the pokey. Did you do that? Hey. Yeah. What I did. What is that? That is insane. So this is, I, if I remember correctly, this is like a piece of jewelry from Reapercon 2013. There were three of them. Um, this is the coolest one. It's like a clockwork beetle, and then there's also a uh, little like um, actual clock with a skull on it, and then there's a. What is the, oh, and then a skull. It's like a steampunk clockwork skull. Um, but I just used some good old JB Weld to uh, emerge the two, and then now I have an extra sturdy pokey tool. But I just thought it looked cool, you know, whatever. That's really cool. Looks entertaining. So, but anyway, all right, let's try and be real painting uh, superheroes here and get this guy done. So, relatively simple today. Um, I do believe most of the paint, oh, I guess we'll go over the, the colors. Most of the painting we're going to do is going to be using uh, our Templar blue here. So um, we'll just be moving up and down from this and then using some more clear blue as we're working through. But just so you know, our colors for today, in case you are trying to grab this right now at home so you can work with us. Uh, real quick, Josh, I'm going to follow up with Ron and see uh, where it's at. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. Alrighty, so we are going to be using today Templar Blue, Clear Blue, Noir, and or Nightmare Black, or Painter's Choice, whatever black you like. Here's the Nightmare Black as well. Linen White, Shadow Green, Snow Shadow, Stone Gray, and Dirty Bone. Um, we won't be using Hone Steel today, but Hone Steel is on our list. We may end up using Dark Skin. Yes, I believe we do. We have Intense Brown, Bronze Shadow, Antique Gold, and then I believe Nightshade Purple was the actual color, um, but we have Night Sky Indigo here um, since I misplaced mine. We haven't used it yet, I believe. or Yeah, we have used it once in Shadow Colors. We may use it today. Um, but again, you can hit, I believe, exclamation point and then M or exclamation MM, and you'll get like the full list of colors and the number that goes with them. So um, don't fret if you were like, I didn't write those down. You can just do that command in chat and it will let you know. So, all right. Same story that we've been doing pretty much this whole time. This paint job is going to feel a lot like when we were painting the ward. So we're going to be doing a lot of the... Uh, like base coloring first, letting some of those tones show through. Everything else very, very, very easy um, in terms of just painting up some metallic color here and washing it, washing it down, highlighting it up. Same with the, you know, his little 
ogre skirt um, that doesn't really protect his cheeks, as you can see. Uh, a really, really fun detail in the sculpt. And then all, all of his little sort of craggy texture on the back, um, that's just sort of washed down with clear blue. So let's attempt to do it, shall we? So I'm going to go ahead and get started with our Templar blue. That's sort of a nice uh, middle tone that we'll be able to work our way up and down from, meaning we can shade down and highlight up from that step. As usual, I'm going to get some of the paint out on the palette. I didn't shake it enough. Just got to do a little bit. There you go. See, somebody got the, the uh, command in there. There we go. So now we got that color out. I don't expect to need to add really much water, but I am going to prep my little surface like I always do. All right. So here we are. Now I am going to be ignoring all of the sort of, I'm not sure, you guys can tell me what you think they are. I just think it's the icy sort of rock texture that he's got going on in his skin. But the stuff on his back, uh, we're not actually going to touch with the uh, Templar blue at all. We're gonna save that because it's a completely different blue tone. And I'm at about a one-to-one -one ratio of water to paint, as usual. Now with this guy, I always mention every single time, just so you know, what you're seeing here in terms of the gradient from white to black is what's known as a Zenithal application of primer. Zenithal meaning we're just trying to simulate a light's zenith or sort of natural lighting from above and all around the miniature. I do this for one, it makes it easier for you to see, and two, you know the story by now, it also makes it much faster to paint miniatures to do that. Um, of course you can do it with a rattle can if you have two different colors of spray primer. If you don't have spray primer and you only have brush on, you can prime your miniature black and then just dry brush from above in white and you can get a relatively similar um, effect. And then otherwise, I just use an airbrush very quickly to do it. It's not required at all. And if you don't want to do it, just make sure you're adding enough of a base coat of the colors that we apply to then go back and shade down and highlight uh, to simulate sort of the built-in lighting that we get from that effect. So, and then bonus points in the chat. If, those, if you were watching last week, what is the opposite of that technique. I know we mentioned it briefly last week, so let me know in the chat what the opposite of a Xenothal application would be. Oh, I know this. Well, you know. Lysol. <clears throat> okay. It's a Lysol All application. Right. Well, I was happy for the two minutes you were out of the room, but I see we're <laughs> right back to it. So what did uh, Ron have I, to say? I will bring some joy to the table here. Um, it is now actually searchable and purchasable. There you go. So. If through some stroke or miracle we manage to sell all twenty four of these before this show is over, I will uh I will I will gift our chat ten subs. Wow. Through some crazy I don't expect that to happen because there's no picture. <laughs> is it, and so it's only the first is it multiple sets or just one? It's just kit one right now. Okay. Kit two's not up because we want to have pictures and stuff. This still needs pictures and hell, it still needs a description. There you go. So it is available for those of you that want to get on it right now before it quite obviously sells out by the end of the evening. Oh, who got it first? Who was that? Vigo, was that you? Natural? Yes. Or Nadiral, if you want to be even more fancy. That's less fun than Lysol. True. Now, you could hit a mini with Lysol. I just don't think it would have the uh, intended result. So, if Simple Green's an indicator... We can pretty much guess the paint may not enjoy it. All right, so we're almost done with this base coating. The uh, base colors, the base color one is not in yet, Gypsy. That one is going to, uh, that one's going to be in probably after the show, um, since we just have to put the skew in and the paint numbers. But it's going to be in today. But that one is just ninety five zero zero zero. So. How many skews does it take to start a painting show? I feel like there's a joke there. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right. Now, is it at 95 because there are 
95,000 SKUs? I think so. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what Ed said. We have 95,000 products. <laughs> now, most of them aren't in, uh, you know, what, are the, what do they call that? Not in, not in catalog? Right. Yeah. Although, I think, I think Ed put some random stuff in there, though. Like, like 8,000 of those SKUs are just like shoes or something. Because mm. Reaper was supposed to be a shoe business. Did you know that? Oh, they're just going to buy out shoe carnivals and yeah. flip them? Mm-hmm. That's, that's actually that, really smart. It's a weird, weird business angle, but that's what they were going to do originally. Well, you know. Make sure to ask Ed about that on the uh, show tomorrow, guys. I know. I'll probably show up in chat just to ask. Now, I am going to do the awkward uh, bee stings on the back. So there are like three, you know, I'm searching for the best family-friendly way to describe this. Uh, there are three larger protrusions going down the back of his spine. Um, that have spines poking through them. So what we're going to do is uh, gracefully paint these three objects just a little bit differently than the rest of the nobules uh, across his back. That's pretty much it there. And we're going to wait for that to dry, of course. Hey, Jacob. Good to see you. All right, so we can probably kill two birds with one stone here. So let's go ahead and use our antique gold to base coat the rest of his armor. Last week was a bit of a finicky paint job just because we had so many small details to worry about. This week, painter's anxiety, not too bad. Uh, really, the main focus on this is painting, learning where to place highlights on skin and then painting this guy's skin directly. So if you're not really used to larger figures, I know when I first started painting, uh, something this size would seem really awesome, like I would want to paint it, but then I probably would have been uh, a bit more apprehensive about it. So don't feel too distressed. Really, really basic principles here, other than the skin. And that is what I'm here to do, is help you out with that. So I also put a link to the actual uh, 9501 SKU in, uh, on the Mubot command there, guys. So if... Uh Oh, look at that. We are, that's the first one sold. Bam. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Vo. Uh, you go ahead and take that, Josh. Yeah, so that would be, uh, uh, yeah, Voe CVS. That's actually his CVS login. Um, uh, okay. I'm assuming he works for CVS Corporate and is a secret millionaire. So. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. If we get sick and we need CVS points, we know See, exactly who to ask. He flipped shoe carnivals. Oh, he took the idea and actually executed it. If you flip a shoe carnival, does it become a shoe circus? I'm sorry. We got a, we got a nice troll to paint here, guys. So moving on to the third panel here. Now, this one's interesting because it has a bit of a divot. Now, I thought that was maybe like a, a, a mold error or something when I had mine, like a little, little dip in the bones material. But uh, no, that's actually a dent in the armor. So there you go. I didn't mess up on mine when I painted it. It's always a nice little discovery. Uh, Turbo Cooler wants to know what the brown you're blocking in right now. What is the brown? So it's obviously a part of the kit. Which brown is that, I guess? What is the brown? Okay, so that is actually not brown at all. We're using antique gold. Or gold, It's just, sorry. it's so old, it doesn't look metallic. So, there you go. But it is a darker, it's almost like a copper, honestly. Uh, but I like sort of middle, middle, of the, middle of the road golds like this because they're easy to sort of tint to either like a bronzish copper or a bright, bright, shiny gold, depending on how you treat it. Going to do the little details here on the belt. And let's see, we'll go ahead and knock out the kneecap. And then now, points to the chat. I had someone, I had JV actually. I know he was watching last week. We couldn't figure out, like, with the jokes between the mantle or the cape. So, it's interesting. What this piece of armor is called. Now, I know we were wondering what, uh, so there was a piece of armor that goes over your hip, and that was actually called a fald. So kind of like a pauldron, but a faldron, maybe, I don't know, fald. So I'm wondering what something that goes over your ankle and foot would actually be.
Let's see. Hitting the other part of this. Now there is some, oh, spats, there you go. Or a sandal, thank you. So uh, there is a little bit of chain mail hidden underneath. I don't think I hit it, let's see. Yeah, so on the one that I painted, I just pretended that was some type of uh, fur texture. Um, but you could paint barely underneath the plating. So. Gators. I don't think the word is gator. It could be, though. Or maybe I'm thinking of the wrong animal. So. I think that's all. Oh, right. The back of his hand. Here we go. Sabaton for the feet? Sabaton? Haha. -ha. I feel like that's half of the education you get as a miniature painter. You start figuring out the strangest small things. All right, so hopefully if you are painting along at home right now, right now, your application of Templar Blue is almost dry. I know mine is, which is perfect for us as we will go in and then start rebasing the tones. Crocs, yes. That's what we're going to call them instead of gators. I wonder if that was actually an intentional naming device for Crocs. That's actually, what have we discovered here? Very ingenious. So I'm going back over one more time with a secondary coat over these main plates of armor, just because I do want them to have really nice coverage because we're just going to wash all on top and let gravity do the work for us. There we go. I, I agree with you, Dabber. Foot bits. I think that's pretty good. Reaper Collins. Can we s see the snow put on? What snow? I don't think there's no snow involved here. Maybe you should have your own show. We should call it, uh, what could we call it? Collins Secret Garden, where you do nothing but basing. <laughs> I think that one's pretty good. This old base with Collins, since you're doing such home renovations currently. All right, so now that that's dry, we can either approach, let's see, did we use the same browns? Pretty much. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bust out uh, intense brown as well as dark skin. We're going to end up mixing these two to do sort of our base for our different um, browns for his straps and his uh, strange little skirt that he's wearing. Obviously, you wouldn't want to tell him he's wearing a skirt to his face, but maybe that's the issue the adventurer ran into. So focusing more on here, oh, this old base, that's actually pretty good. I like that. So using intense brown, we're going to go over the wrist guard straps. By the way, I uh, checked with Ron, uh, Josh. Uh huh. And we've uh, we've sold one. Oh wow! Yeah, so CVS is first ever. Does he win something? He he wins being special. Oh my gosh! Congratulations, CVS. Today is your day. Oh, and the numbers. So yes, I don't know if you saw his comment. That was the first ship he was on. I guess is what he said in the Navy. Oh, it was like the idea of the ship. Well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Is that like a, is that top secret? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I'll just assume not, and then we'll all assume not, and then that way he doesn't get a knock at the door. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, they are they're coming, Trash Rama. We uh, you know we're putting them together and kind of figuring out which ones uh, which ones we want to use. We have so many slots now. Basically, everything's making the cut. So obviously, we can switch them out in the future if we need to. All right. So I'm using that same color and doing the belt directly. There we go. USS Wasp. That's cool. Thank you, CVS. Um, any word on the Aussie minis? You know, that's a good question. Um, I know they are. I'm seeing them sitting next to me, and they're definitely really, really cool. But uh, I, w I would say today, maybe? Soon.tm? Isn't that the... Uh, yeah, soon TM is when. That's, that's the only, the only hard, inf or hard information I can give you. That was one thing that I was told that since I'm doing this show now, I'm allowed to use that phrase whenever I discuss things. So. Soon TM? Yeah. People Perfect. Going, When's this happening? I'm like, well, soon, I guess. Soon-ish. All right. And then this slightly hard to reach bit here underneath his big old honking arm. Oh, did you actually make, make a couple of uh, emojis for us, Trash Rama? Because that would be, uh, that's cool. You can email them to me. Although if one of them is my face as the Teletubby son, um, I don't think anyone wants that. I think I was the one that brought that into <laughs> chat, if I don't, <laughs> if I don't remember uh, incorrectly there. So now I'm going to mix uh, dark skin with intense brown. 50-50, just a different off color. We don't really want it to be too dark. We want it to be bright enough so that way when we wash everything down, it still pops up. All right. <clears throat> Tazalunch said that uh, Wednesday on the release of the Australian or the minis. Yeah, the Aussie awesome minis. So, I mean, it could be sooner than that if we're lucky, but. They're really cool. So, like, I didn't really know looking at the online photo and then looking at the. You know what? We'll just do this real quick. I wonder if this will show up a little bit more. I don't think anyone has shown it on a close cam. There, we go. there you go, guys. So this guy is full of really, really, really uh, nice fur texture. And for those of you that are really meticulous, you can, pr I mean, this isn't sort of your jabby texture. You could actually paint every single little hair if you'd like. So this guy's really cool. And I've got the other one here. I'm so glad I'm wearing the glove too. That way we don't rub anything off. And then this one's really awesome just because of all the detail. Little potted plant. I believe, is that a, there's a, Sort of like a snake tech, like a uh, sculpt thing around the planter, which is neat. I'm not, you could probably turn it into anything you wanted. Oh, that's cool. And then there's all kinds of cool little bits and bobs on the backpack there as well. So, but I don't know if any of you had seen that close. Also, it looks like your girlfriend wants a set of those. Uh, well, she has a really cool job that uh, makes money, so she can donate. <laughs> so perfect. Yeah, it's for a good cause. I'm not just being cheap. cheap. <laughs> so. Mm. There we go. We're painting everything right here this color. When we wash it down, we're only going to highlight up um, the actual cloth part, not the fur. The fur will just remain darker. Same thing for everything else. Like I said, everything on this guy other than the skin should be easy, easy, easy. No real attention paid other than making sure it's painted. You could leave it unpainted, but that's not really what we're going for here. Go ahead and mix more of this color. Wow, Valentine's Day is coming up. Yeah, well, <laughs> the fires are happening right now, Sydney. So, you know what? That's, that's my firing back at you for saying that one. So to speak, of course. Yes. Do we have a... I think the Victoria Miniatures was up to 15,000? It's like the last thing I set, saw for that. Oh, is, it, is that a competition? I didn't even think about that. Well, their kit's much more expensive. It is. <laughs> if that's the case, you'd be having to sell six times as many. And I, listen, I like I like drop bears, um, and I like you know. Right. I know koalas are the same thing. Whatever. Right. I like koalas, but uh, the tank kind of looks cooler. Tank is very me. very cool. Yeah. But totally different ball game, obviously, in terms of prep and assembly. I just like to imagine a tank running over the fire to put it out versus a koala with a fireman's axe. Well, I would rather imagine a koala driving the tank over fire. Uh, what just happened? This needs to be a thing. Because that's going to sell this. Yeah, because that's what's going to save them, not... Koalas driving tanks. The, yeah, the poor animals have been through enough. I don't think they need to be traumatized by an APC. 
gosh. Is that is it an APC? I, yeah, I believe so. Oh, Kangaroo okay. APC. Well, that's really cool. It's got it's got a rad roll cage. Well, it rolls other people, but it's got a <laughs> yeah. implement in the front of it. Yeah, definitely cool. I'm hoping to see. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually saw one at ReaperCon this year. So. In kind of a commemoration, I guess. I'm hoping to see more people enter into the historical uh, division as well. I know I didn't last year. Uh, I almost did. There was just physically no way that I could actually get it done in time. So um, it'll probably happen this year. Wink, wink, hint, hint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so aiming towards the bottom side of the base here. And it's completely up now. The kit is. There we go. So the base kit is what you're saying? Yes. The base and then the... I'm going to see if I can get a picture of it actually into the stream. Technology saves the day. And don't forget, we have two straps behind the knee and one behind the ankle. So there you go. There it is. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, look how cool that looks on the uh, the case. I really like that. It's really nice. So there you go. There's the kit. That's what you know to expect. You get all your colors right there. Does it say, um, yeah, so it comes with a nightmare black. Uh, and then all your other colors, four minis. And there you are. Nightmare purple? Nightmare purple. <laughs> That's what it says. Wait, purple? It's black. Well, that's awkward. Does it say purple? <laughs> Hold on. I guarantee. No, 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 no. That, that's right. This is nightshade oh, night purple. Nightshade purple. That's right, because it's black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. I was like, what am I saying? <laughs> See, we're both blind. There we go. Is Nightmare Black a part of the core palette? Yes. Okay. That's that's where that was coming from. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. A lot more sense. Max, um, you know, we do have a ban button in the chat. So if you keep giving reasons for me to spend money, uh, <laughs> you may disappear. Oh, and I, I would happily ban Max Powers 9-11. Oh, oh, I know. No, I'm kidding. He's my Steelers buddy. Although, he does have poor taste in teams. It's fine. That's funny. So, that's pretty much it. Now, what I'm wondering is if we should move on to the... Act so, funny enough, when I was painting this rock, um, you can see on our finished version here, I did do a little bit of like geometric shading on it. This is a really good way to actually get us prepared for this guy in February. Because that's the same technique that we use on all the painted bits on this big guy. Not including, of course, the parts that are still see-through. Um, the only weird, and I'll make a comment anytime I share this miniature. Um, the only preparation that I did was paint him with a gloss varnish first, but that's just so we could cheat and go a little bit faster. But same technique, so we're going to sort of practice on this rock where there's no real, no real worry. So you can see already the Zenithal undercoat with the Templar blue on top shades everything nicely. But that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to paint on top of that even more. So we can go ahead and get started on that process. You can see I still have Templar blue on the palette. We're going to be shading up with... I'm going to do a little test to make sure I know which one. I want to say it's not linen white. I want to say it's dirty bone, but we're going to check just in case. One of these is more yellow, and then one of them is more uh, sort of like pink. So the result varies pretty heavily. So the linen white definitely is not the one. Pretty sure based on what I just saw. Yeah. All right, so we ended up using uh, the Dirty Bone. So mixing in, and I'll do a glove check so you guys can see. We're going to have pretty much two parts Templar Blue, one part Dirty Bone. This is the color that you're looking for here. You can see how thin I'm going on the glove. It's got body to it. It bunches. So if you're wondering what consistency, if you're really trying to get 
close to what I'm doing. All right. So one trick that is important to keep in mind whenever you're doing, I would say, uh, Twisted Doma, sorry, I don't know why that question made me stop like a brick wall. So yeah, I put varnish through my airbrush all the time. Um, I just add some airbrush thinner to it. Um, specifically for uh, this bad boy, I just painted it on. It didn't make much of a difference. But in general, yes, that's how I seal everything is through the airbrush. Just make sure you clean it the best you can. So now then, as I was saying, when placing highlights, especially on skin, now, typically on anything in general that has like compartments or layered bits, whatever the case is, uh, you want to push it to the nearest shadow edge. So we'll start with this bottom ab right here. Right up underneath the next ab is where I want to start applying this color as close as you can get it as I taper it down. And I'm just going to be doing this on every single surface. So it's still a little bit wet. You can see right here where I'm pointing. Up underneath there, it's wet. Shouldn't be too big of an issue, though. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this color up underneath directly and across the top like that. You can see we're getting closer to that finished product that we have. My paint is still mixed to the same ratio. So it's a 2 to 1 ratio of water to paint, but it's a 2 to 1 ratio of Templar Blue to Dirty Bone to get the color that we're using now. Uh, Doing the same thing here, yes. Twisted, were you able to uh, search it up again? Because I noticed you were having some issues, just making sure that uh, the link is actually working for everybody. Got another kit ordered, but you got distracted looking at minis. You know, that's the worst part. Uh, I can't remember when I did it. I want to say last week, probably on Thursday. When did I see you? Thursday or Wednesday of last week? Oh, I think it was Wednesday. Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. So I actually just sorted all miniatures on the website, so I didn't put any kind of search term, and I went through every page. And I pulled, you know, the 54 mil sculpts. I ordered a spug, the space pug. You know, I ordered the flat. I went through and got all the real <laughs> gems. You know, I was digging deep. Wow. You know, uh, but yeah, the, it's easy to get distracted uh, going through all the miniatures that you're able to see on there. I ordered more minis. The Pokey Tool told me to do it. Hey. Oh, the 95,000 isn't up yet, Gypsy. Um, I'll talk to about, uh, I'm sorry, I'll talk to Ron about maybe getting like a, like a, you know, a placeholder up because that's just a six pack of paint. So that's not too hard for us to get logistically worked out. So Applying the paint on the peck here. You can see we're just basing it. Finished result, we go brighter. So you can see we're just starting to push these colors up to every single edge on all the muscles. And that'll get you where you need to be. Watching from Jamaica. Well, hello, hello. Yeah, that's cool. Although, I'm curious. Uh, do you have local game stores that, that order these, that could order something like this in maybe? I don't know how that works. Um, or, who's our supplier for Jamaica? Not supplier, but like what... Uh, Base of operations would we ship that to to ship to Jamaica? I'm asking uh, Ed off camera in case you guys are curious. No idea? Oh, Ed doesn't know. I would say maybe the... Uh, this, I'm going to sound a little ignorant here. Where is Jamaica? It's in the Caribbean, right? Yes. Okay, never mind. Then I guess we would be the closest. You never know, too, though. Like Some hubs pull stuff down and then stop. Um, through that area, so like, so if you're sh sometimes if something's shipping from the UK, it'll actually dip south depending on who it is. Like DHL, we'll mm. make we'll make a connection there. Uh, really. Okay. UPS also has like entire islands that they've built that are like international dropovers. Weirdly, sort of like how we have air bases that you can't really get to that are oh, in sure. between fueling areas. You know. That's fair. So the same thing up here on the un. What is the muscle underneath a bicep? Justin's ripped, by the way, in case you couldn't tell um, from all the photos of him that you've seen. Huh. 
Yes. He's the resident gym rat that can answer our muscle questions. Uh, that that's a that's a much older me. Or I'm oh. sorry, you much younger. Much older me. you. Much okay. younger me. All right, we're gonna get to work here Hasn't pretty soon. Yet, yes. Workout Wednesdays with Justin. Here we go. Musty Justy's about to. But but that would be uh, tricep. The triceps underneath, yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's what we're doing is we're pushing the tricep highlight right up underneath the bicep, and then highlighting the top of the bicep. Just like that. Oh, Look at that. I did come across a legacy photo the other day of me from like four years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was in much better shape. Mm. So now it's uh, posted up on my, it's on my refrigerator. So I have to look at it before I go and get food. So I can make better decisions. See, I look at photos of me from, who knows, maybe four or five years ago. And I'm like, oh, look, I was so much skinnier, but so unhappy. <laughs> Yeah, so now it's like, you know, maybe I'll just... So, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I do want that extra taco. <laughs> All right, so... Or, you know, having breakfast for dinner. Brenner, as I, it were. I actually have that planned one night for this week. Hey, that's... Sydney and I had breakfast for dinner, I think, on... Saturday night, I think? That sounds fantastic. We had eggs with uh, Thai red curry... Um, cheddar mixed with sriracha cheddar, aged cheddar. Um, that was really good. And then we had uh, <laughs> it's the face that Justin's making right now. <laughs> He's like, what? And then um, we had some sausage that I put uh, Chinese five spice, red chili flake, and um, you know all the other goodies like some garlic and etc. And made wow. some little patties out of that bad boy. And then we just let them all, all marinate and go to the deep end of the pool of uh, maple syrup. Because that's the way that it should be done. This sounds amazing. Because you, well, you got to get the sweet with the heat, you know. I, I agree. Offset the salt. Completely agree. So, but it was really good. Can't go wrong. And these weren't, you know, those thin, sad McDonald's pancakes either. These had some body to them. You know? The ones that are that are almost always cold when you get them. I don't think they. Oh, come they are. Warm. Yeah, you'll get like a the edge of one that'll still be hot, but it's only because like some grease had hit it. It wasn't even just hot itself. Nothing against McDonald's pancakes. Of course, of course, we've all been there and I'll probably be there again, but it's like the, what we should have said, sorry McDonald's, is the uh, microwave pancakes <laughs> that are frozen and you're like, what is this? Yum. It's like stuck to a paper plate on the bottom. Oh uh, look, I, uh, I, my uh, Max Powers is back after I timed him out. Oh, great. He, he came back. He didn't take the hint. We missed you, Max. All right. Flatiron Pepper Co. All right, I'll check it out. I'm typically the kind of guy, like, if we're at a, um, a Thai place, Chinese place, Indian place, a place where you tell them a level of spice on a scale of one to something, they... Um, they typically go, are you sure? Right? Like, they always question what I'm requesting. I'm like, no, you're fine. You like spicy stuff? Yeah. Oh, man. That I do. I like Thai spice, but I don't like... Um... I like the flavor spice, right? Yeah, Where correct, it's, it's yeah. on the back end. Mm -hmm. It's not, like, just burning your taste buds. And it's always just got this different... I don't know. It just, it, it, it just hits me differently. It's more pleasurable. That Thai spice just hits different. It does. It hits how, different, man. Okay. There we go. Yeah. We got the meme in for the day. Um, but yeah, the, uh, probably that is close. So like, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, yellow Thai curry, really hot. Um, cause it's still pretty sweet. And then typically you have it with potatoes and stuff. So it, the starch helps kill that heat. Um, but my absolute favorite is anything with, uh, Szechuan peppercorns cause it numbs your mouth. Ah. So it just, everything goes numb and you're like, this is so hot. And then it's not hot cause you go numb. And then you're like, wow, I'm numb. So you take another bite and you're like, this is so hot. I mean, it's just... It's just a never-ending yeah. cycle. It's great. It's one of those things where everyone at the table just takes a break to go. Whoo. So. No, I'll never do that again after I eat a, uh, a whole uh, ghost pepper. Oh, I have been there before. And that was probably the most miserable I've ever been. What's interesting about that is how it plateaus and then sits for like 10 minutes. Yes. And it just doesn't stop. Correct. You're like, this is, you and then it just literally stops. Like you, it goes from 100 to zero in the course of like a minute. It so. does. I remember just dumping milk on my face and my mouth and it just, nothing would make it go away. 
See, for me, I, it was painful, and you sort of sit there like, wow, but then your endorphins kick in, and your body's like, we're going to go into shock here to protect you for a few minutes. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's not that bad. But, this is great. Yeah. Yeah, I had a friend that uh, had a crazy garden when I lived in Oklahoma, and one year he just decided to uh, starve his peppers he was growing and try and um, drought them out to make them hotter. And um, I think he succeeded based upon the pain we were all in. So. I couldn't imagine actually nomads is uh, they use their the reaper peppers in their chili. I couldn't imagine using re. I, I will say that the flavor of the reaper was not that good. What's so the ghost was like a um it tastes like an arm almost like a citrus bell pepper like it's yeah. very fruity and yeah. very citrusy, and you're like oh what's the big di and then you die so ah. tastes uh, good and then it's a big mistake. Flan flanetha flanetha says, when, do, when I do highlights, I get an effective pool of one color on another, what I frustratingly call a fried egg, egg, fried egg effect. You don't. So can you explain why that is? A pool, yes. So, um, I, so as we've been talking about heat and spice and everything nice, and I haven't described anything I've been doing, it's because nothing's changed. So I'm still just going through and sectioning out all of the um, different... Uh, you know muscles right and we're almost done as I'm moving my way to the back of this uh, left arm But so to try and help you out here I'm running out of Templar blue anyway on the palette, so we'll, we will just sort of do a quick demo And I'll do it on My little layer up palette so that way it will all make a lot more sense, but so here's the deal As I don't shake my paint there we go. Yeah, I would. I don't think Snow Shadow is supposed to come out clear, so that's my fault for not touching it for a week. All right. So, I always use... Now, a quick caveat on just all of my painting in general. I It's very, very wet. It's always very, very thin. And I use a natural bristle brush. Those two factors will make your results vary. Um, but uh, I... Always use a one-to-one -one ratio, which means a brush full of water, and I put that down first like this. So you can see that there. There you go. Obviously, this will pop up whenever I get color on it. So you can see the paint move around like this. Now, what I'm painting on top of um, is actually a powder-coated laminate that I use for all the palettes that I sell because you can paint on top of this just like a primed miniature. So it's kind of like a... Weird little effect. But, so as long as I have the paint at the right surface tension, you can see me here literally moving around this super thin paint, but I'm getting a relatively even coat until I start to taper it like this, and it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Now then, really all I want right here is just sort of a even coat, and I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'll show you how I highlight on top of this. Now then, since I haven't done it yet, this episode, and I have to be a good advertising boy, um, if you are really struggling uh, with figuring out how to get more brush control, um, palette mixing, things like that, um, I do sell a product on my website at minipainting.studio. It utilizes the exact same powder coat, so you paint on top of it, and you can see right here, I call these power-up palettes. So what you can imagine this as being is a worksheet for painters, and it teaches you with a corresponding two-hour video um, how to layer your paint and get highlights to go through four different exercises, as well as a color matching exercise, so that way you learn how to mix colors based on your own paint uh, collection. So this is literally homework. I mean, it's fun for the right kind of person, um, but it will teach you effectively how to do the same thinning that I do. But we're going to let this dry and live its life over here for a minute while we get back to work. And then I will show you exactly how I get all of those highlights to just not really look weird, so to speak, or splotchy. Some people say tea stain. You say fried egg. I haven't heard that one before, and I like it, so I think I'll run with that one for a while. But now I am mixing our Templar Blue 50-50 with Dirty Bone. I'm assuming 50-50 here. It looks about right. So I, I believe that was the last coat. And then now here's the new coat. See, it's a little bit brighter there. So 
I'm not too concerned with this section because it's in shadow. That's why I'm just sort of moving on from it. Now then, we're going to move back to the muscles in the front. Pushing again directly up under the muscle, like that. You can see how bright that gets. And I'm pushing the paint, so I'm physically pushing the brush at a 45 degree angle up underneath the muscle. And that way I'm getting the paint to pool in the direction that I want it to dry. So it's like an automatic way to create a taper effect. You could layer from above. Um, so quick poll in the chat. How many people only paint this direction when you paint? See what I'm doing on my wrist? How many people paint like that? Now how many people also paint like this? See how I'm able to control where that paint's drying? This is actually a really good trick to create tapered highlights in small areas because you can control where it's going to pool and where it's going to taper. So type a 1 in the chat if you only do that. Type a 2 in the chat if you also push up or any other direction. So that's what I'm doing here to get a really, really easy tapered highlight effect. Of course, you have to have the paint prepped enough, meaning the uh, sort of right ratio in order for it to be nice to you and, and do that. So let's see, we got, we got some zeros, we got 1.5, we got some threes, Jacob, come on now. Jan pushes, we know. <laughs> Last year at ReaperCon, Jan sat right next to me on Sunday when I brought like eight dozen donuts in the morning. <laughs> and she sat right there and said, show me how you push paint. And so I just pushed paint for about 30 minutes. And hopefully it helped. I think it has. I've been seeing Jan's work for quite some time, and it keeps getting better and better. So, <laughs> No, no, Matt, I'm not surprised uh, that we're getting silly answers at all. That's to be expected, of course. So moving along, highlighting up everything else that we've done so far. This should be relatively obvious, right? We're just moving through the stages, going brighter as we move along. And then you always want to make sure you're showing a little bit of that previous layer before, otherwise you're going to be covering it. Now that was a haunted production booth. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. We have a, a wild ad on, uh, on set today. Mm -hmm. He's just lurking. Uh-oh. Now we have a wild Cindy. Cindy, do you want to come say hi to everyone? No, I just came to get Ed. Our production manager, everyone. No, you came to get Ed? No, you came to get the guy lurking. Ah, I see. All right, so highlighting up. So if we compare this dude to our other dude, you can see we've got one more layer to go. But look at that. We're starting to round them out. Actually, I think, uh, are these obliques? Is that what this is? I know it's a word. Is this an oblique? underneath yes it is those are the it's the outer of your abs here yes so on the side so yeah yeah so i think that oblique highlight looks a little bit better but when will the next kit be shown road dog you must have joined late uh, i'll show them again um we have the new miniatures here finished them up yesterday and they should be photographed and uh Uploaded the kit is re like is ready to go live on the store. So let me say that whole sentence. <laughs> but so it's ready to go on the store. They just need the graphics for it, which will happen once uh, I'm done and I hand off those minis. I mean they're here with me. But and the first kit is actually purchasable right now if you just showed up or just came in. Yes. So you can purchase uh, the kit that has all the paints that we've been using here for all these miniatures in January, and then very very soon in a day, I'm assuming maybe two soon TM whatever. Uh, the other one for February will be live as well. Uh, Mazamune wants to know uh, if you're going to wash this or put do a wash. Sorry, not wash it. Nope, there's no uh, real. So yeah, I mean the the wash that we are going to use is going to be across all the the bumps on the back. But for the skin, we don't need to. Um, 
So if you didn't uh, use like, so we're gonna wash, I'm sorry, I'm, all, I'm assuming we're talking about the skin, no. Uh, we are gonna wash all the other sort of boring details. Um, otherwise, nothing else beyond that, so. That's kind of what the Zenithal undercoat does for us, is that it allows us to get some of those deeper shadows, including our base colors, uh, as we start early work on the miniature itself, so. Let's see. Max, mm, I don't know if we're gonna make the eyes glow red today, but, I mean, do you think our troll is magical? That's, that's why we did it last time, right? To make it look as if the puppy was controlled by magic. I believe that was the full explanation, but. Now the face, I'm not doing much to, because you can see we already have a lot of definition in the face. So I'm pretty much waiting uh, until the very end to go in there and highlight up those uh, little details. Going in and fleshing out the neck. Wow, I think that's the first time in my life I've ever been able to use the term fleshing out when directly referring to flesh. <laughs> First time for everything, I guess. Yeah, Justin's like, oh, my first time I can't talk about. I'd go to jail. Uh, yeah, I almost went to jail. Okay, there we go. See, careful what you wish for with Fu Dusty Musty. Fun fact, I, Dusty uh, I learned kind of the hard way that um, public parks, mm -hmm. um, they do indeed have a closed time. Oh, yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, no, they just, you can, you're free to drive in and out, but fun fact, after a certain time, they are indeed closed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that happened to me at um, disc golf courses. In, uh, when I used to live in Edmond, Oklahoma, they have two amazing courses that are public parks, um, not dedicated just to that, if that makes, if that makes sense. Right. Um, and so multiple times we're trying to finish up like right as the sun's going down, and then you hear someone coming, and it's just literally a cop. <laughs> and they're like, park's closed. And you're like, okay, <laughs> we're not criminals, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. We're just out here trying to enjoy life. This was a city park, uh, Dabber. Mm. Mm. Weird. Yeah. Uh, I assume that's kind of a, hey, don't make this your house type of rule. Uh, basically, it yeah. was a, I'm going to give you a ticket for being in the park after hours. It could be much worse. And I'm like, yes, officer, you are correct. That's cr I mean, that's still kind of funny, but yeah. That's a lesson that you're like, should I have learned this lesson in the first place? Did I need to learn it? But all right, thank you, officer. <laughs> still <laughs> thank makes you, a good officer. story to this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just disco golf. I think. I think you mean. Or I think. Yeah. I think Josh meant disc golf. Did I say disc? I said disc. I well, didn't say disco. Uh, Sydney said uh, might be rethinking this relationship. Oh, an upscale version of hacky sack. <laughs> she knows just as well as anyone, she would have seen a disc golf disc somewhere in my house at this point. What's crazy to me is how they vary like golf clubs. Like mm -hmm. it's like you pick one up and you're like, Hey, don't touch that. That's my putter basically yep. or whatever, you know? Yep. And it's this tiny little, it's just, you know, or the price. What, what was her name? Uh, it's not, it's not important. Jacob. Wow. Jacob. Come on, man. See, Jacob's, he's, he feels a little too comfortable now. I will tell you this. Her first name was a palindrome. A, a palindrome? So she, she was animatronic? No. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, that was pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. All right. So now I'm just adding linen white for the first time to our mix as we're finally going to finish out this skin. Uh, it looks like I probably did use our, our um, clear blue somewhere in the skin on my initial paint job. But we're so good this time around, we didn't need it, so. And the, and the money goes to uh, Vaxar for guessing it right the first time. Wow. Anna, a lot of Annas, though. That's, that's. that's I like that her name was Noon. I don't know anybody named Noon. <laughs> that's kind of a cool name. Also, you are correct, Max Powers. Not, not my current uh, fiance. Not the same person. Okay. So. We're moving towards the end. So we're moving in with our one-to-one -one mix, Templar Blue, with uh, linen white added finally for the first time. Okay. 
So, is anyone painting along at home? Drop it in the chat if you are this time around. I know Byron was trying a lot to make it happen. I haven't seen Byron. I don't know. Byron, if you're in the chat, say hello. I think your uh, warg looked great. <laughs> Max is like, <laughs> Max like something's happening in the background. You are right, sir. I'm just trying to gracefully host our way. You're sculpting, Rainbow Sculptor. What are you working on? Anything fun? Will the January uh, kits still be available? Um, so I can probably ask. The old kits will always be available as long as they're in stock. So like January will still be there in February if somebody. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna continue. I assume cool. as long as the video is up on YouTube, videos, then yeah, we will. Uh... Perfect. Hey Reaper, is my addiction. I'm glad you're painting along with me. And I'm sorry you're sick, Max. That's no good. All right, cool. So, you can see how drastic that highlight was. So, and I actually feel like I like this one more. I like this one more now. Okay. So, I feel like I'm painting in my house right now. I've got Arthur thrown up in the background. We've got a party in the front. All right, so. I'm going for the abs here, the obliques, the triceps, the biceps, the omiceps, all the things you can see here. Highlighting our way up. Yeah, I actually do think I like this highlight color better. I, I remember specifically when I was working on this guy, when I was painting the first copy at my house, that I was kind of not impressed with like the highlight structure I had. So I'm glad that this one's working out a little bit more dynamically. Could also just be the uh, camera as well. Web blending the warg. Winter Z, I've got a question for you. Do you use a wet palette, my friend? If you live in a place where wet blending dries too quickly, there are two simple suggestions that I have for you. Uh, one uh, is that you should be trying a wet palette. And then the second suggestion is can you purchase a small cold air ultrasonic mist humidifier. That will save all of your painting, my friend. That is all you need. I use one all the time. Um, I use one actually to like go to bed. I use the same one. I actually carry it from room to room, like a really sad, weird person. <laughs> with your, with your hold on, your disc golf set here and your... No, not a disc golf set, literally a space heater. I bring, a sp I live in a house that's constantly set at 63. Wow. So that's ballsy cold. <laughs> um, but so I carry those things around every single day. But yeah, if you've got if you have a humidity issue going on, man, I'm telling you or lady, uh, definitely try a cold air ultrasonic mist humidifier. You can get them for as cheap as like 20 on the uh, Amazon Rainforest website. Um, a little bit more if you also plan on like using one to sleep and you want it to be a little bit uh, like have more capacity to run for longer. Um, but I use it all the time. So. Uh, but yeah, it will help keep all your paint like at a perfect drying consistency. It helps everything. I actually okay. have one sitting on my uh, side table. It's it made wonders for difference in sleep. The, oh, during the winter time. Oh, I'm me. telling you, you sleep so much better. You wake up, you don't have a sore throat. That's what happens to me. And then I immediately get a sinus infection. You still like, dry out. Yeah, dude, it's perfect. Just make sure you keep it clean. Yes, otherwise you're putting gross stuff into the air. And you know, yeah. Uh, so definitely hit it with vinegar and do all those tricks. But um, oh man, Sydney. What? <laughs> We're gonna put her in timeout. We're, I'm done. Timeout. See, she makes these jokes because she knows that they're not true. But what she's forgetting is all the people on the internet that don't know it's a joke. <laughs> they're like, "This has got to be real. No way, this could be a joke." Yeah, right. Oh my goodness, that's too funny. Also, so. Taz Lynch, we do have a now recording light. They uh, they walk right past it. Yeah, but you know, there could be an happens. armed guard, and people would still be like, "What's going on here?" Uh, Teo Cat, do Reaper paints need any water? I always do a one-to-one -one ratio when I paint. Um, technically, no. You don't need anything, right? You can just paint right out of the bottle. Um, but just because of the way and style that I paint in, in the application process, I always do a little bit of water. Now, I will say, because of the other stuff that's added into Reaper paint um, from point one, uh, it's a lot smoother. 
Sometimes I know when people are not using Reaper paints um, or equivalently sort of higher end brands, they will come to me and say, hey, my paint literally won't do what it's doing for you and it gets grainy and yada, yada, yada. That's the issue, so. Let me see, uh, Trex, were you, you were the one that asked me that question? What is it called, right? You're asking about the humidifier? It is a, I believe the term is a cool mist ultrasonic humidifier. And you will find plenty. Like, not, that's not a name brand or anything. It's just the, the term used. But put that in your painting room, and I guarantee you, you will see quite the change in uh, your paint's attitude towards life. So... All right, now we are getting to the end of the skin here. Now on the face and everything, I'm going dramatically brighter just so I can get everything um, to show up a lot more for you. Interesting with this sculpt, there's so much detail going on in the face that you kind of want to end up highlighting it in a lot of different directions. Um, I'm doing it just to make it visually interesting. So as you can tell, right, I'm not doing the top of all the things here. I'm pulling the highlight towards the mouth, similar to what we did on the, uh, the, the warg, pretty much. Um, but just pulling it so that we get more definition in his features. And or so he shows up more on camera for you guys. And then at home, you'll go, that looks about right. Thank you for being helpful, Max Powers. Things I've never said for 500. He's trying. He knows now he gets in trouble. So, oh, 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 uh -oh. oh. see, that was because we complimented Max. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's what happens when you compliment Max. You just and can't. He's literally try to jump off the table. Yep. All right, so we're going, we're going from the base here now as we start finishing this guy up. At least the skin. Everything else we're going to go real, real quick on. So this weekend, I do have uh, my... Secondary tier Patreon paint along. We're painting the Bones Black Androids. We're doing shaded metallics in non-metallic metal this time. Um, I know I've seen some people sharing images of their Maggot Crown Ogre Juggernaut that we did uh, the second Saturday of this month. Remember, you can always check out those classes and that class information at patreon.com slash studio. You can also get more info at minipainting.studio directly at my website. But that guy looked like this. You can see him here. For some reason, we always end up doing pretty much just Reaper minis. So, uh, Jacob says his is still silver. Jacob, you are in trouble. Jacob is a part of the Patreon. We did start him directly from clean honed silver, so you can see how dramatic uh, that shift is. But So we'll be doing similar to this, but non-metallic metal, meaning, of course, we aren't using metallic paints at all. We're just trying to make things look good. Some other examples, bone black figures that we used for classes. This was a skin tone class where we did the stone carver giant uh, from Bones Black. And this was just a two hour paint job. I think this guy was actually only an hour and maybe 20 minutes. So we try and keep it pretty quick. But we do have that going on. And remember this month as well, anyone that signs up at the $20 tier or above gets a periodic table of painting sent to them in February. Uh, Ground Zero asked if the promotion is still going. Who? Ground Zero, I believe. What, uh, uh, promotion of? Your Patreon. Oh, do I still have that promotion? Yeah, so that's funny you said that right as I was saying it. Um, but yeah, so if you sign up for the Patreon, at uh, the $20 tier, you get a copy of this. I did have somebody buy it last week as well. It's always available for purchase, and I have a digital version and a colorblind version. Um, Zap is not here in the chat. I remember you, Zap, because I was going to give you one of these for free. You said you're colorblind, and then I never saw you again. So and the next time I see you, I'm going to hound you, because I'm trying to give you something for free, buddy. But this is essentially a color theory tool that has... Um, formulas built in. Every single color that you see here has an associating number, and you can just follow your tertiary, uh, analogous, all of your color relationships on the palette itself. It's available. Um, oh, there's that. Sent the message to Reaper Mail. There you go. Zap is waiting for a free palette. So whoever's watching that, Reaper Live at Reaper Mini, or message uh, m me, or d d do the email. I feel like somebody may try and finesse a free one <laughs> otherwise. Um, but there you go. Now, that you, now I know you're in the chat, and I know that you need one of these, so I'll, I'll get it to you somehow. Um, but, so if you sign up for the 20 buck tier, which gets you 
um, two classes as well as uh, a palette that associates to the class so you can color match while we're teaching. All of that goes to you in February um, and then otherwise you just get a palette for every class. But yes, that promotion is still going. You can check out all of the painting products at minipainting.studio. So, if you are interested in what that is. But now, we're just slowly trying to finish this out. I'm going to use Dirty Bone, uh, dirty bone directly here. On, oh, sorry. On the teeth. Also, I love that your, your girlfriend is hanging out with us. It's, yeah. it's perfect. I love her commentary. You know, that's cool until her boss walks in and they're like, hey, did you get that, uh, get those revision, revision emails? She's actually working on a, um, a beer can right now. I forget for what company, but it looks really cool. She said it was a fish beer or something. It has like a pelican on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kind of sounds gross though, not going to lie. I don't know. She keeps using that term. I'm thinking it's a fishing beer. I'm not sure. They're watching with you. Great. Really cool. Love <laughs> it. That's like Jan. Jan says that they, uh, they'll have me on in the living room and their kids are like, you watching that guy again? The answer is yes. Yes. Yes, they are. All right. So I'm happy where this is at now. We can move on to uh, finishing out the rest. So. Ah, there you go. It's a beer to drink while you're fishing. Now it all makes sense. Yeah, that's that's much different than a fish beer. It's a fish. I mean, <laughs> I guarantee you, a fish beer is a real thing, though. I'm I believe you. Sure. They sure. will brew anything. Yeah, I completely agree. That exists somewhere. I'm a fan of. I don't really drink like at all unless it's food, but I like um, sours. Yeah. I used to be really into like gross IPAs. Like the worse, the better. Um, like dark and just dingy. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm into like sours and. Just weird stuff. So I'm taking Reaper Clear Blue. Oh, before I do that, let's finish up this thing we were doing here. Oh my gosh, wait a minute, here we go. Okay, I forgot about the egg comment. So, whenever I'm highlighting, whenever I have the thin paint, you can see, because of the surface tension on top of my little palette here, I'm able to get a super clean highlight and taper it out to the color below as the paint runs off of the brush itself. So you can see I just did that there. Um, this of course is that special coating that I was talking about that holds paint like a miniature. So I'll do it again on top. So this will dry here in about two seconds. All right, so gonna do it again. You can see I can do multiple applications of the same highlight color, and it becomes more intense every time I apply it. And all that is is making sure that the ratio of your paint is correct and friendly and nice while you're doing it. I know that's kind of hard to illustrate and understand on a flat surface. Um, I always suggest people try and do that as well. On a flat surface, just so you can physically see how your paint is moving. Um, what's interesting is a lot of people that are painting miniatures, right, uh, assume that the easiest way to illustrate or learn a technique is by painting on a miniature. Um, a lot of the times it actually is uh, more eye-opening for you to do it on a flat surface because then you really understand the relationship between the paint, the water, and the brush that you're using because you'll be able to physically see the paint leave the brush. So now if you're using Taclon, nylon, some kind of synthetic, um, your results will vary because all of those materials uh, let pigment out differently than a natural hair brush, but don't fret it too much. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking our clear blue. We're going to turn that into a wash. So I'm doing a three to one ratio of water to pigment. I love the clear paints for this purpose as well as tinting all kinds of neat tricks. But you can see here that is a one to one ratio. This is now a two to one ratio and this is a three to one ratio. And by that I mean I'm just flooding my brush with water. This is a little bit thin because I didn't grab enough to begin with, and there we go. So now I'm going to be running this on top of all his blueberries on his back. I think that's the new industry term we're going to be using there. Yeah, I mean, he's literally just wearing a coat of blueberries, right? Um, I mean, if I could, I would. I mean, it's not the worst thing to smell like. Yeah, I like the smell and the look. Aesthetically of blueberries, I don't care for the taste. Oh, you mean just like dirty water? Yeah, they, okay, so that's not just me then. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually really hard. It's, I feel like they've been GMO'd out of existence essentially oh, at this point. Oh, sure. Because they're just hard to grow um, all over the place. So, because yeah, I, I mean, I've had like a just 
really fresh off the vine, growing in somebody's backyard blueberry, and it didn't taste like anything I've ever had in a, from a store. So, um, I basically, I'm kind of a peach snob for the same reason. Peach snob. Yeah, my my grandfather had a uh, pecan orchard, and he had a bunch of peach trees. Wow. And there's nothing better than those peaches. Well, there you go. My, uh, I, I will admit, a part of that's probably nostalgia too, though. Hey, that's why you can never try and replicate it. Exactly. But um, I'm the same way with honeysuckle. So, like, I won't have it as an adult. Like, I won't try and go find a honeysuckle plant and be like, oh, let me eat this. Because as a kid, I thought that was, like, the coolest thing of all time. And then now as an adult, I'm like, someone sprayed this <laughs> with something. And I'm like, you know, it's probably microbes and little animals and whatever. But that was where I grew up in the summer. That was, like, honeysuckle all over the neighborhood. And it was super fun to do. Yeah. Hang out by the fireflies, do all that good stuff. And also, uh, like I said, guys, I will work to get the 95000 up. So if you guys want to check back um, here in a bit, and it should be up. Gypsy Jan. Ah, the wild blueberries in Sweden and Denmark are so yummy. There you go. That I 1,000% believe. Um, interestingly, underneath the power lines in California, where my parents lived before I was born, um, huge wild strawberries would grow, like the size of a baseball. And they said that they were just insanely delicious. Now, whether or not they were, like, super power charged uh, from the power lines or not, probably a story for another day. But, all right, so now we've got that rocking and rolling. We are going to apply one more wash on top of that after it dries. Um, you can tell that what I did here was darkened a bit, but what we did was apply that first and then the same overall tone wash that we did all over everything. So we're going to do that to finish up all the metal. Every other detail that we have. Uh, did they glow at night? No, they glowed uh, in your belly, actually. So, how did we do the... Ah, that's how we did it. I'm also going to take this wash and apply it directly over the tongue. The tongue, the same way that we did the warg, with a totally different color, I'm going to do the tongue. Or, sorry. Let me illustrate and rephrase that entire thing. So the Hatter, yes. Uh, the, so I believe that's what Justin's talking about, is getting the kit of the just plain six colors, which is noir black, intense brown, uh, old gold, honed steel, linen white, and dirty bone, I believe. But all of those, maybe not dirty bone, there may be, one, uh, uh, there may be something I'm subbing out there incorrectly, but um, it's six paints. Those will remain the same, everything else changes. So, speaking of our noir black, <coughs> actually, I think nightmare black uh, is what ended up a lot in the first kit, but there you go, Max, see? I didn't think my parents were just completely lying to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take noir black and add quite a bit of water. Right now it's at a one-to-one -one ratio. Looking at the wash that I applied here, I can tell that there's some color in it and it looks a little bit blue. So I'm actually gonna take a little bit of the clear blue and mix that in and a little bit of the intense brown and mix that in as well. A little bit more of the blue. There we go. So I have sort of a muddy, deep, deep blue color. Kind of like a deep purple with that brown mixed in. And we're just gonna be applying this all over to every other detail. So this is gonna go over the gold. You can see how much is being applied. It's pooling nicely. I wanna make sure whenever I have a pigment wash like this that I have an even surface tension. This will behave differently than, let's say, an Agrax Earth Shade or an Army Painter Strong Tone or even a Reaper wash, mostly because this is just water and pigment. There's no other material mixed in with this. We are just rocking with the water. A lot of people ask me as well, do I use traditional washes um, or anything like that? And I do, um, mostly for like low-end commission work or anything that I'm just trying to get very consistent results in large quantities. Um, my favorite is the Army Painter Strong Tone, which they changed the recipe on, so it's not as awesome as it used to be, but it still does the job. Um, I like it because it's really thick. Uh, now it pools a little bit too much, but you know, you can only you can only do so much. But I do like pigment washes a lot. Remember, you can always watch me streaming, hopefully, every day of the week other than Monday. Um, but I try and do it uh, every single day of the week when I can on Facebook, 
on YouTube and on Twitch all at the same time. Mini Painting Studio for all of them. Of course, I pretty much interact with uh, Facebook all the time. Um, that's where the Patreon stuff happens in a group. That's where you know pretty much everything that I do ends up at some point. Uh, and then Facebook also got upgraded to 1080. So anytime you see me streaming on Facebook now, it's also in 1080. That is a new feature uh, that finally got released my way after many months of wondering if it would ever happen. And it happened. So I'm going to make a little bit more of this wash. Playing it on the foot here. Now, of course, we're not doing the basing or anything like that. Um, for these miniatures, I just used baking soda and white paint. And then I think I added some that uh, wet on top and then just dumped baking soda on top of it to give it like a really powdery finish, but uh, nothing too insane. There's Max Powers, Wonder Wash. He knows the terms. So, Xanatonium, tonium. That uh, that's actually a direct result of quite a few different exercises that I recommend for people for brush control. Um, but of course, I have to push the product, the Power Up palette that teaches you brush control and layering paint correctly. You can check all that stuff out at minipainting.studio. But thank you for the compliment. That's I mean one of the things too that makes you a lot faster is if you paint with the same size brush for an extended amount of time. So. I'm going to apply this wash over the teeth and the mouth so we can highlight those up. Whoop, underside of the horn there. And then I'm taking this and we're going to apply it uh, on the back on his blueberries just to darken that up to match the other guy. Also, I just talked to Ron about the core palette mm -hmm. going up for sale, so um, that should be pretty quick, pretty soon. <laughs> I'm sure Ron is just loving it. He, he is. He's, he's like, mean, he's, oh my gosh, how many more things are a part of this show? Yeah, like like basically the rest of us up here, he's buried in work too, and he loves when I come in and I'm like, hey man, can you, uh, can you, can you do this real quick? I just need to browse that shelf to see if there's anything for this week, and I'll go in there. Hey, man, what's this? Yeah, what's what's this? What's this thing? Will you tell me a story? <laughs> I like it when you tell me stories, Ron. Just just keep keep talking to me, Ron. Yeah. Are you trying to work? I'm sorry. But yes, ninety five uh, zero 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 should be up pretty soon. And then we're applying the wash here up on his little wristlet bands, and then we'll knock out uh, our rock as well. It's a little bit of a different concept here. Painting geometric shapes is always fun. So what I'm going to do is just wash directly on top of the rock. Assuming you have even surface tension, it will help it appear more rocky. Is that a term? I believe so. More geological, right? Yeah, there know. we go. More rock-like in nature. All right, so we're going to let that hang out. The horns, uh, OK. That's sort of a grayed out. So what I'm going to do is take uh, the intense brown and a little bit of our snow shadow and mix that together because I had a strange sort of grayed brown tone for the horns. And then I highlight it on top of that. So I'm going to do that right here. And we are wrapping up everything else. So I am waiting on quite a few things to dry here, so we're just going to recap um, other stuff that we've gone over so far in the show. I actually love the way the skin turned out on this guy, too. Um, but so in case this is your first time watching, every month now what we do is we have an encounter of four miniatures. You have a hero, a support character, a monster, and a big boss monster. So this month we started off with this warg. He was the first miniature that we painted uh, on our Miniature Mondays show. So you can see him here. Then we had Oswald, the Overladen. He was our support character for this month. 
you can see he was full of all kinds of bits, bobs, and details. Really, this was just an exercise in base coating everything slightly different colors so that you'd be able to go through and uh, wash them down. Thank you, C-Not, for the big old raid. Oh, yeah, look at that, that hefty raid. Thank you, C-Not. Big old raid. Um, will you put up a February kit for painting along? Yes. So, like, like I was saying uh, earlier, I know I wasn't able to say it constantly the whole show. I'm about to show you the next miniatures that we're going to be working on, and then all that information will go up probably in a day or two once they take the photos, finish the graphic, and then put the skew up for you guys to purchase as well. And then, uh, of course, what we're working on today, here was the first version that we did. So, like I said, I think our skin just turned out better. It's brighter, it's more dynamic, uh, sharper contrast. I just like it a little bit more. Like I, like I was saying, I was sort of struggling with the jump on the, the muscles. I think the muscles here worked a little bit better. And then our hero character for this month and the snow encounter is this dwarf right here, which, as you can tell, is wearing our, uh, our warg's uh, brother for a coat. So this guy should be pretty fun. Again, since he is a metal miniature, every set comes with one metal miniature. Um, and I know that that does make some people in, uh, uncomfortable that are new to the hobby and may have not used metal. So next week we will have a video of any prep work that I needed to do at this, and that will be uh, up for you guys as well. So, um, and then for next month, for all of you that may have been missing, our, let, let's see, how are we gonna do it? All right, so we'll start with our hero. Our hero is this wizard right here in a more muted red and green palette. So you can see the hero has a little bit more real estate, but I loved this miniature because it's a great exercise in painting cloth and highlighting it. Very, very simple. So you can see him here. Our support character is this wonderful friar. Now then, you can kind of get a hint as to our color palette for the month of February. Obviously, January, it was a lot of blue. This month, it is a lot more warm and muted tones. Now then, the story continues. You know, uh, this month, our encounter was in a blizzard or a snowstorm. Uh, the hero then retreats into a cave. And so that's what you're seeing here on the bases is sort of this nice cave texture with a little bit of snow. So now then, our smaller creature Probably one of my favorite paint jobs I've done in a while is our crystal golem here. Now, I am warning everyone well in advance, this is a finicky paint job. It does not take a super long time, but it does require a steady hand on some of the edge work. So just keep that in mind. Yes, coffee, the bases were just a baking soda and paint. Not on top of glue, though. It was just literally making like a paste out of baking soda um, and white paint. But, so this guy is halfway translucent. Um, you can see it here. So the inside parts of the arms, his chest, and the crystals on the back are just straight up see-through, and then the rest merges into a painted mini, which was kind of really hard to <laughs> figure out how to make that work, but made it work. And then the big boss monster, of course, is our big Yeti shaman here, and he is a little blown out from the camera. This should help you a little bit see this pink flesh he's got that's, going on. That's perfect, yeah. Yeah, a lot of pink flesh. Um, similar technique as we used on the warg to do the undercoating on the fur. And then he has sort of the same vibe of crystals for his weapons and his nice little necklace there. So, um, and then with this guy, we'll do a prep uh, video as well, um, using some sanding twigs and things like that to remove mold lines and make your life a bit easier. But, so this is the encounter for February. Really, really exciting. Um, and then I think if you can guess what would happen after that, if our friends are going into a cave, you may be able to guess what happens uh, for March. But all of those, once they have their photos taken and they have a nice little uh, photo shoot, that will get thrown onto a graphic and they will be thrown into the kit so you guys can purchase them well ahead of time uh, for February. Correct. So, do not fret. So you can see our wash is drying on top of everything. What we can work on now, actually, is probably just the stone. So I have Noir Black out already. I'm going to get a little bit of linen white, and we will just shade up the rock. So. Oh, you did. But I missed that, by the way. Thank you, uh, uh, Footer Trouble? Footer Trouble? Future Trouble? 
Maybe it's future trouble. Thank you for gifting the sub to uh, Reaper EPU. I appreciate that. Wow. Always a sub, but never the subber. The Twitch versions of a bridesmaid, I'm assuming. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, so with this stone, it's a little bit tricky. We're going to do a little bit of a geometric uh, like practice round here for the Crystal Golem for February. But what I'm going to be doing is outlining each section and then highlighting my way up across it. So you can see here, outlining each section. Now remember, having your brush being completely wet um, and then having your paint be at that one-to-one -one ratio will allow you to use it more like a pencil, which is honestly the whole terrible trick to being accurate with a brush, is that it should be wet and pliable and malleable as you end up working through it. And then, of course, depending on what type of brush you use, uh, you know, you'll just have to finesse your way to figure out um, which works best. Here you can see I'm just using water to taper, so I just added water in the brush, and I'm spreading that surface tension around so that it dries smooth. Top section I know is going to be brighter, so I'm just literally painting that whole panel, so to speak. I always think of this as like panels. So this is a little section here I can outline. That's going to be brighter, so we're going to do that whole section. So, Numbat, you missed a lot today. That's totally fine. And why is that, Justin? That's because it's on YouTube. Whoa. So, yeah, you can watch it on YouTube. You can also watch the uh, replay here on Twitch as well if you would like. Absolutely free and yes. Yep. That's why the kits are so essential, right? Because even if you can't watch live, I know a lot of people can't, you can always buy the kit, grab it, and then go watch the replay, hit pause whenever you need to, take as much time as you want, and boom, the magic of the Internet has helped you. So Yes. And I imagine we'll we'll sell the kits for the foreseeable future until, you know, people get bored of them maybe, but I right. don't know if that'll ever happen. We retire them. We evolve. retire them, yeah. A time capsule. What also time remember, capsule <clears throat> if, you've, if you've been on the fence about trying it out or not, um, this season, so to speak, we do have an extra episode. So it's a episode number 13. On that episode, we will be taking your photos of all of these miniatures that you've painted along with us to do like a community review. Um, so if you are doing that at home, just remember, take some photos for us, throw them up in the Reaper Facebook group as well, or send them or tag uh, Reaper on their other socials, right? If you're someone that uses Twitter or Instagram, something similar. Um, and then that way we'll be able to see them. Um, I know that I directly have replied to uh, pretty much anyone that I saw was sharing uh, the Miniature Monday warg or Oswald, um, anything that we've painted so far, if you've put it up in the Reaper group, make sure to tag uh, me from Mini Painting Studio or someone else like John or whoever else it is. I know people are just kind of tagging everybody randomly, um, but I do see it and I will tell you what I love about what you've done. So you'll get a little bit of early interaction or if you have questions too, you can always ask me and uh, upload photos of your work and we can help you. So, um, And then uh, Mal, the answer is yes, but yeah, it'll I'm, be delayed. Right, I think the the supply there will be delayed. Actually, hey Ed, we have had uh, definitely an, uh, a request in this chat today for um, this kit to be available in the EU. So if we make a, a you know a handful and send them over on a on a pallet, how long does that take? A week or two, or well, if you right after the show's done, go down and have Cindy and get her five or six, however yeah. you think. Yeah, they can get it on this week's pallet. Okay, Please. cool. Wednesday or Thursday. Leaves Wednesday or Thursday. And then or on holidays. Holidays are screwed it all over. Ah, I see. Okay. So then uh, kind of somewhere in that range, and then however long it takes to get there, and then you'll have them available. It's usually there about a week. About a week? Okay. So by this time next week, maybe by the end of next week, you should be able to purchase them uh, in the EU, I would hope. Um, give or take, of course. That's soon TM. Correct. As we are still trying to figure out just how many <laughs> yeah, exactly. need to exist in the first place. So, um, But I know you've been telling us in the chat that people have been buying. So that's awesome. I'm glad. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just re-outlining all the edges of the rock as we move our way through. Let's see how fast. Cool.
this is just for practice for when uh, we have the very daunting task of the transparent crystal golem. I'll be honest with you too, it's really not that hard. When I was painting it, I made it a lot harder on myself uh, because I realized I, I did work for maybe 25 minutes and I ended up covering anyway. So not as intimidating as I thought it would be. And the end result's pretty nice. Okay. So I'm gonna add some little scratches and texture and things like that for this final little layer of highlight. Nothing too crazy. That looks good. I like the, the marks. That's, that's really a good touch. So that's one way to rockify something. Otherwise, it almost looks like this really smooth granite. Right. And the sculpt itself is really smooth. So, I mean, what you could do is uh, put paint on and then dab it with your finger, get a rough texture that way. Okay. Um, if, you have a, if you have a really beaten dry brush, you can always do um, some stippling like that. Uh, or if your brush is just really wet and malleable, just pretend you're using a pencil and then very gently just scrape it across the surface of a miniature, do some cross thatching, uh, you know, different techniques to make things look like different textures. So, um, and that's, you know, I may end up implementing some texture into uh, when we paint the wizard for March since he has so much good cloth to do it on or the friar either one um, has good opportunity for both so I can teach you guys how to bake in some texture into some cloth so there is a lot let me what's happening in the chat there's so much uh Valandar the red are the pathfinder paints demonstrative of the reaper line as a whole um yeah, they're the are same. they yeah. yeah, it'd be like the bones. Yeah. Be like they'd the bones. Be yeah. Okay. They're going to be more like bones than they are core colors, but yes, they are representative. Okay. Perfect. It would seem. It would seem that uh, Max agrees with you. It agrees with you as well, well since good. speech is hard. It's always good to have somebody on your side. I don't know if you want Max. On yeah, I feel like though. it's disingenuous when it comes from Max. Yeah, if like it comes from Max, it's completely. Disingenuous. I think he's looking for an alibi, yeah. <laughs> not a friend. <laughs> <laughs> That seems to be the running theme here. Love you, Max. All right, so let's see. Cool. He's always on Ed's side. Well, there you go. It's good to have a friend. I see how it is, Max. I see now he gets upset. He's oh, I don't have a friend, too. All right, so now I'm taking our dirty bone over the washed teeth. Highlight up our teeth. I mean, he wouldn't have clean teeth. He is an ice troll, but... We don't want to do them too dirty. Then on the horns, you can see we have some of that uh, texture baked in there. So I'm just going to go in and do some lines on the little ridges. Really loose at first, and then we'll just do, sort of like on the rock, we'll go back in with the thinner, brighter highlight line. Yeah. Like so. Now, of course, when I was painting this at home, I can get really close, but I have an actual camera an inch or less away from my forehead <laughs> as I'm trying to do this. So. Oh, it's hitting the hat. See, now this does remind me of home. I always wear a hat when I stream and it bumps the camera and I have to say no hat club. There we go. Just going in, doing some line work on the ridges. And I'll brighten these up a little bit more just to make them stand out. I feel like the studio contrast when we paint in here is always a little bit brighter. Just to make them stand out on camera for you guys. There we go. We'll do this side. Oop. Go ahead and just wipe that paint off, no big deal. There we go. So, everything else, relatively painter's choice. The metal, I didn't highlight on the original paint job. The uh, brown here, you can still, is still drying. That was the deepest part of the miniature in general. Um, so, it'll probably take the longest to dry. What I did was I just took some of the darker, intense brown that we mixed together and highlighted it up around the perimeter of the back portion, so not the actual fur, the fur I left nice and detailed and shaded. And then I just went around these sections here as you can see me doing. 
adding sort of a speckled leather beaten texture. And the same for all these parts too. That dangle down around the cheeks. The cheeks. That is a troll anatomy term. All right, so barring everything else that we're ignoring completely that we haven't done. Okay, yeah, that's what we had forgotten here, the nails. All right. Joss asks if you always use a wet, wet palette. Always. Always. Always, always. What I use are natural sponge sheets. You can get those from uh, your Amazon River website or something similar. They're a cleaning product. Some people say chamois. Um, these are separate from a chamois just because they're uh, like a natural shaped sponge. I think it's like a loofah that they're pressing into the shape. Um, but I use that. They typically come in a like, I think it's a five pack for maybe six dollars. They're about a dollar each. If you've ever bought um, a wet palette sponge before, you know that's definitely not what they charge you. So I would highly suggest that if you're on a budget. Um, and then I just use wax paper on top uh, for, for like baking paper and that's it. So. I also don't use a wet palette. This was a question that I was getting from some people too. Um, I don't use a wet palette in order to save my paint for later. Um, I know that some people do that because they paint um, in multiple sessions, right? And they don't wanna have to remix colors. I use it as a functionality um, bonus, so to speak, because I try and get my paint so thin that this allows me to get crazy thin paint without it drying on me. So I don't necessarily care about saving the paint for later. I just want it to be way, 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 way thin whenever I use it. So, um, oh, Max, also, this is just a black nitrile glove. So in case you're wondering, size uh, painter's hands, because I have small hands, um, but I know, um, so like if you go to minipainting.studio and click on the Amazon link at the top, I have all of these different materials linked. So. If you are gonna try and buy these uh, supplies, please do it through the link because I get like three pennies <laughs> for every purchase, so that does help me out. Um, but uh, you can get all that information there. Just remember, okay, Max, so yes, you can order the exact size that I have listed. Um, otherwise, don't be like uh, one of my Patreon people, Peter, I believe, who bought them and uh, forgot to get the size that made sense for him. So then he just shipped them to me in the mail. <laughs> so <laughs> they're very small. Um, but beyond that, I think that, Justin, just ignore it. We're just, we're beyond that point in the day. Um, oh, man. Eight. This is, I don't want her to ever leave. Okay. This is great. All right. Well, if she needs more incentive for me to never break up with her, because we'll just hear that. So, <laughs> hey, thanks so much for the kind words. Um, we're going to buy that lamp. Awesome. Is that the big one, the big bar? Which I think I have two lamps listed. Either way, you're totally fine. They're awesome. Um, uh, both of them are, I believe, five brand, and one is the 31 inch or 32 inch bar. That's the one I use right now. Um, and then if it's the one that's like 16 inches that swivels on the hinge, that one is great too. That's the one that Sydney uses uh, when she paints and is helping me at my house. So, but yeah, the swing arm. There you go. So the, yeah, coffee. That's the one that Sydney uses. She can tell you if it's a good lamp. She likes it. Um, she was painting hundreds of bases this weekend to try and save my life. So um, as I'm working on other stuff, but boom. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for this miniature. Um, thanks so much as always for watching. We'll go back over uh, our schedule that we have. Um, so of course I will be here on Mondays with you. Uh, then you have uh, Ed and Anne on Tuesdays, no? Yes, yes, yes that's correct. What, he, okay, anyway. <laughs> it's, it's Anne then Ed. And then Ed, yes, she's in the morning at 11, Bingo. Uh, CST, um, and then all the other shows in general start at 3. Yes. Yes. Um, then Wednesday is Painting Platinum. Mm -hmm. No, that's Thursdays. Thursday. Wednesday is Anne. Yes. Anne as well. This is off the top. I, I had a cue card last time. I'm sorry, guys. All, I'm all Anne. Period. It's all Anne. It's all Anne uh, Tuesday through Thursday, right? Yes. She, uh, yeah, so she in does, the morning. In yeah. the mornings. Um, then Thursday is Painting Platinum. Then Friday is Reaper Land and Reaper Live. <laughs> or am I having this wrong? Is that on so, Thursday? So Wednesday, and we get two doses <laughs> of and You get her at 11, you get her at 3. Reaper Toolbox and then the Pro Tips. Thursday, 
you get Ann, and then you get Sadie for Painting Platinum, and then you get Reaper Live at six. There you go. Okay. Then Friday, although we discussed it today, we're gonna we're we're gonna change some stuff up. Uh, Friday is Bones Five Live slash Reaper Land at three o'clock, and then that's it. Boom. That resets Monday with the lovely Josh here, better known as Vanna White. Thanks, Sydney, for that a new nickname. So remember, the kits are live. The wonderful kit that you see here on the screen is available right now. Later on, at some point, remember, Ron is dying and he can't work because Justin keeps running in every five minutes to say, hey, can you? Where is this? Um, but <laughs> at some point, those six core colors will be available for you. And then all of the miniatures that I brought here today for February will have their pretty glamour shots taken. And then the graphic will be available and that kit will go for sale for you um, for the first Monday in February. I don't know if that's immediate. 95000 is, is officially live. live. There you go. So sixteen ninety nine for that kit of the base colors as well. Um, and then what's nice about that too, right, the kit price is, uh, I believe, $40 or, or one penny less than that before tax. So that will help you get to your uh, 40 minimum to get the free shipping and the goodies. And, and all the goodies, yes. All the goodies that you can select from. Um, and that is, uh, I believe, all that info. Remember, you can check me out on Facebook, everything I have going on. I try and stream Tuesday through Friday uh, whenever I can at 2 p.m. CST for about an hour. Um, I do two classes every month as well, available through Patreon. You can check that info at patreon.com slash studio. Big thanks again to everyone that signed up. I know I've had quite a few people sign up. That really helps me out so I can keep feeding my cat so we can get fatter and fatter and happier and happier. And then this week as well, or this month, sorry, for the rest of January, if you do sign up at the $20 level, I will send you a nice periodic table of painting in February to go along with your painting palettes that correspond to every single class. So if that is something you're interested in, make sure to check it out. But that being said, the second you sign up for as cheap as $5 a month, you get access to over 56 hours of class content immediately, as well as the class second Saturday of the month. So that's it for me. Justin, do you have anything else other than saying goodbye in your lovely voice? Uh, goodbye. No, uh, actually, I would say just check out the kit. Um, 95000 again that is uh, should be there I just I just put it in on our website it looks like I can pull it up there should be pictures too um, outside of that just follow along on Josh and keep tuning in guys uh, Reaper is my addiction if you go to minipainting.studio there's a button at the top that just says Amazon and it'll take you to a little page to answer your question so but thanks so much, everybody, for the compliments. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the uh, skin that you worked on today turns out great. Remember, put it in the Reaper group. I'll help you out if you have any questions. We'll show it off, and I think that's it. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Trash Rama. Also, our raid is starting now. Awesome. It is Mocha, the lovely and amazing Mocha. Awesome. Make sure you guys uh, follow her, say hello to her, see what she's working on, and we'll see you next week. Spread the Reaper love. Yep. All right, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.